brothers and sisters god bless hope your night or day is going good everything's going well with you this isn't going to be a very long video this is just going to show more dishonesty on greg jackson's part something that he doesn't mind doing is continuous slander it's one thing to have a disagreement theologically with someone and be able to point out points where they are incorrect it's another thing to slander misrepresent and make up things altogether about a person and this is what greg jackson does here so this person called ginger cat says according to true speller you are chosen if you believe his words not mine so it's actually the words in the bible that teaches us that if you believe it's because you're chosen it's so it's not even my words it's the bible's words and i show this over and over in previous videos you're welcome to check out those videos plenty of verses brothers and sisters beloved of god we're always bound to give thanks to god for you from the beginning, God chose you to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. So God chose people to be saved so that they would believe in the truth. And I demonstrate this over and over in previous videos, but for the sake of this video here, I'm focusing on Greg Jackson's comment, his reply to this person. And he says, Mark and avoid that heretic. All Calvinists will then say, well, if you truly believe, it will be apparent in how you live your life, fruit, works, etc. All Calvinists redefine faith, grace, and salvation. They have a different Jesus who didn't die for all the sins of the world and a different gospel. Only truly saved if you have a requisite amount of works and fruit, which they never explicitly define, qualify, or quantify. And you see this got 12 thumbs up by people who don't mind misrepresenting me as well. I'll give people a thousand dollar challenge. You can go to anywhere on any of my videos and if you showed where I backloaded works or fruits or a changed life in any of my videos, I'll give anyone a thousand dollars. So he says mark and avoid that heretic. And the only reason why he's calling me a heretic is because I'm not bo boasting in my personal choice by which I believe saved me, but I'm believing in the sovereignty of God by which I'm saved. And that God gave me a gift of faith and faith wasn't something that was self-generated from myself. The scripture is very clear that by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourself, it is a gift of God. So the Bible tells us that faith is not something that self-originates. It's a gift of God. And this is why Greg calls me a heretic. He can't be legitimately calling me a heretic because I've ever added fruits or works or changed life to the gospel. He can't be calling me a heretic for any legitimate reasons in accordance to what he's saying here. So the reason why he calls me a heretic is because I can show over and over how God does the choosing, how God chooses people for salvation. And since Greg cannot rebut the scriptures, he's reverted to calling me names, calling me a heretic. He calls me a Calvinist. Keep telling him over and over that I'm not a Calvinist. See, he says, avoid that heretic. All Calvinists. He keeps calling me a Calvinist when I tell him that I'm not a Calvinist. He has the inability to differentiate between someone who's a predestinarian, someone who holds the sovereign grace, and then a person who is a Calvinist. I said from the very beginning, this should demonstrate it even further, that the reason why he calls me a Calvinist is because it has a dirty connotation behind it that he wants to label that to me. It's like if you call someone a rapist or a racist, and it has a dirty connotation to it by which you will see someone through the lens of that label. So he calls me a heretic, he calls me a Calvinist, something that I'm not. He then goes on to say, at what I teach, it will be truly apparent in how you live your life, your fruits, your works. All Calvinists redefine faith and grace and salvation. So this is a thousand dollar challenge to Greg Jackson since he made this charge that I add fruits, works, change life, etc. to the gospel. 
that I redefine faith and I redefine salvation. Greg Jackson, you'll get $1,000 if you can provide those videos by which I've done that. Since you've made the slanderous charge, that's what I do, that I've redefined faith and I add works, a changed life, fruits, etc. Go ahead and provide those videos for everybody. Or one singular video, since you say that this is the case. If you could provide one singular video where I've done the things that you've made in these charges here, as far as these accusations towards me, if you if I've done any of these and you can provide the video links, then I'll give you a thousand dollars. And I will also give you an additional thousand dollars for any video that I've called myself a Calvinist. And any time that I've called myself a Calvinist, each time that I've called myself a Calvinist in my videos, I'll give you a thousand dollars for each time I've done that. So if you can find five videos where I've said it, you'll get five thousand dollars. If you can find 10 videos where I've said it, you get $10,000. Greg, if you can show me those videos where I've called myself a Calvinist, I will give you $1,000 for every time I've said it, along with $1,000 for every time I've added fruits on or works or changed life, etc. to the gospel. Since you claim that I do this, this should be very easy for you to demonstrate by providing video evidence, and I would think that this would be an irresistible opportunity for you since it's so clear that I say that I'm a Calvinist and I'm a Calvinist and I add works and fruits etc a changed life if you can provide any of this evidence you'll get a thousand dollars you'll clear your name as being a slanderer and you'll get to line your pockets with a lot of green so this seems like this would be a great opportunity for you Greg Jackson since I must have called myself a Calvinist over and over for you to say that I'm a Calvinist so confidently and I must have added on a changed life, fruits and works and etc. to the gospel. You must have seen that in my videos that I've called myself a Calvinist and have done all these things. So you're more than welcome to go through all my videos, pick out the videos, and you will be rewarded handsomely when you are able to provide evidentiary support for the things that you're saying. He goes on to say, they have a different Jesus who didn't die for the sins of the world. That's another lie. I believe what the scripture says when it says that he is the savior of the whole world but what's that mean does it mean he's the savior of every single individual or does it mean that he's the savior of the world because there's no passage that says that he's the savior of every single individual but there's plenty of passages that show us that he is the lamb of god that takes away the sins of the world now what's world mean in biblical context now to get that answer we come over to ephesians chapter 2 Starting at verse 11, it says, Therefore, remember that previously you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called the uncircumcision by the so called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the people of Israel, and strangers of the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were previously far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Now we see Paul references the Gentiles as being without hope and without God in this world. That there was a time when the Gentiles were excluded from the promises, from the covenants, from Israel. They were separate from Christ, having no hope and without God in the world. So at one time, the Gentiles were without the covenants, without the promises. They did not have God. They didn't have any hope. But now it talks about the blood of Christ in verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were previously were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So what this verse is saying is that the blood of Christ is now applicable to all peoples of the world. Men from every tribe, tongue, and nation of people. That he's now died for the sins of the whole world. That he's not just the God of the Jews anymore. But now he's calling men from every tribe, tongue, and nation of people into salvation. And when we look at the scriptures more definitively, we don't see that he's calling every single person into salvation. But particular individuals of his own calling and his own choosing. Out of the world, and the world means men from every tribe, tongue, and nation of people. Everything that is now outside the, the Israel Jewish nation. So when Greg says they te 
a different Jesus who didn't die for the sins of the whole world, that's a complete lie. It's how we define world, and we have to define it according to biblical context. Greg defines world as meaning every single individual that will ever be born or ever has been born. But the Bible defines world as outside the Jewish nation and the Israel context, but does not necessitate every single individual. So he goes on to say, they have a different gospel, only truly saved if you have a requisite amount of works and fruit, which they never explicitly define, qualify, or quantify. Again, Greg, if you can provide any evidentiary support for any of these claims, I will give you $1,000. If not, if you cannot provide any support for these claims, I would ask that you would please stop from any further misrepresentations and slander. Because what you're demonstrating, Greg, is because you have an inability to defend your position from the scriptures. You have now resorted to lying and trying to manipulate people through slander and misrepresentation. If that hasn't happened, and that's not the case, and you have evidentiary support for these claims, then if you will provide the video links, I will start pumping out the money for you. You give me your PayPal link and you'll watch thousands of dollars flow into it each time I've called myself a Calvinist and each time I've added works and fruit and a changed life unto the gospel. If not, you have just been exposed as being a liar and a slanderer who doesn't mind misrepresenting people. You're probably bitter because of the previous videos that exposed you for being someone who's biblically inept. When it comes to someone who does not understand God's sovereignty. And because you were in fact napalmed with scripture after scripture that shows that God does do the choosing and you have no rebuttal except humanistic excuses. Because in your arsenal you had no scriptural defense, you then started slandering me. And you to this present day keep slandering me and misrepresenting me. If you can't provide the evidence, then it's just the case that you don't mind being a liar and a slanderer. And the people that validate you on this don't mind being the same way. They don't mind being slanderers either. And I'm referring to the people that thumbs up this comment that you made or people that make the same slanderous charges but have no actual support for these type of charges. So I'm going to probably wrap this video up here, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Just wanted to bring this out. Kind of want to move beyond this. But there are people that don't mind misrepresenting people that are trying to give biblical truths about the gospel and about God's sovereign grace. And because Greg cannot defend his position biblically, he's now resorted to lying and slandering, something he has been doing. I just thought he'd probably stop it by now, but he's actually continuing doing it. So God bless everyone. Peace to you. Take care. And I hope your night or day is going good. Then I got me down.